Hey YouTube, <clears throat> it's been a little bit since I made a video and uh, as you can see I mounted a new shock but I didn't mount it on the bottom yet because along with the shocks on both sides I also put new um, upper control arm bushings in. Uh, those bushings can be a bugger for you. I'll show you what I use to get them out. Um, what I did was I have this Pittman arm puller and uh, all I did was take it and put it around the um, frame of the upper control arm and I put a piece of um, I can't do all this with one hand and then I put a piece of steel, heavy steel that had a little hole in it as a guide hole just to stay on that little pin there and what it did was it, I used that actually it would be from this other side I used that to push the bushing out of the control arm that's how I pushed them out now to put them back in they're every bit as hard to put in as they are to take out so to put them in here's what I did I took a five inch long grade eight three uh, half inch bolt and what you'd have there is you when you put them in you're, you you want to push on this shoulder here you don't want to push on this end because all that does is con is uh, make the rubber bigger inside and it actually will expand this inside if you're not careful so you want to push on this well it just so happens that two inch pipe black iron pipe fits exactly over that so what I did was I put this in line with the control arm put the bolt through everything and I put uh, this piece of threaded end so that when this would be pulled push when it pushed through it would have some space to go and uh, I used this to pull them back in it actually worked pretty good especially with my um, air rack or not the ratchet but the impact gun just pull them right into place so that's what I used to take them out now I didn't hook up the um, shock absorber on the bottom <coughs> because I actually want to do the control the lower control arms I have the bushings for that I want to put the bushings in there so I need to get that those off yet the ball joints are an item not going to replace because I just replaced them about a year and a half ago and I've only probably put about 3,000 miles on the truck if that so they're good as well as the um, rotors are good because I replaced both rotors last time I got brakes I am going to replace these hoses though you can see this one just broke off while I was in the middle of putting stuff together which I really didn't care about because of I knew that they were corroded so I wanted to take them off anyway so my next project is to take off the lower control arm and replace those bushings so I'll do that now the frame is completely finished as far as welding goes I welded that and that's a plate you're looking at there that goes over top and is welded to the existing frame you can see the other one on that side I have a plate there on inside and out <coughs> and the frame uh, I don't think I showed this to you but the frame actually goes my my new frame slips inside this old frame about four and a half inches so between the plate the weld to the old frame which I put like right right in here is where it's been welded to the new frame or to the old frame so the new frame fit inside the old frame I welded that up and then I put this plate across here and then on the back side I also put another plate there to finish that up just to tie it together um, I the last time I saw on the last video I wanted to put the torsion bars in but I had forgotten that I wanted to put the lower control arm bushings in first so that's why I didn't put the torsion bars in yet but I did turn the truck around it's facing outside now but of course it's dark out already but anyway 
while I was doing the shock absorbers today I noticed this one side here was uh, pretty rusted the uh, shock mount so I replaced that I cut out a pattern and replaced that welded that in so when it comes time we'll be able to just put the shocks onto those but again I need to take the control arms down to replace the bushings which I have all that stuff here as well as the brake lines so at least I'm starting to get some parts in I also got um, these plates that hold the bottom of the they go underneath the bottom of the axle so that the U-bolts have something to bolt into so I got those two plates for the rear and I also got all the U-bolts for the for the rear now I bought these from a company called LMC and uh, I got that, uh, the link to them by watching one of the hot rod uh, things that Barry White where he puts cars together uh, in a couple days hot rods and he had that in his link and I looked it up and man they have everything I mean everything for an 89 Chevy pickup truck and beyond so you can buy all kind of stuff there it's amazing I could have bought all those parts that I made there which I didn't know at the time but I wanted to make them anyway I just wanted to do it myself so I still did not make these and on each side but I will now that I have the frame welded and it's all together but I want to finish this <coughs> control arms get the torsion bars in and then do the rear end that's the uh, steps that I want to take to finish this up I also it's past 8 o'clock as I go to bed at 8 o'clock I also got some bulk urethane the other day and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my lathe to turn my own bushings now I uh, started doing it <coughs> as you can see now it's not perfect because I'm just doing a little bit of trial and error on these this stuff cuts pretty quickly so you have to kind of go easy with it I was gouging it a little bit there this one looks a little better but these are just my trial and I need to drill a bigger hole in here what I like about the lathe is that man you can make stuff perfectly centered I mean the hole through that looks like it came from one end and out the other rather than you know when you do it by hand you got it off an eighth or whatever and you can't get the bolt through so even with these being temporary here you can see that that'll be a nice fit you just have to bump that in there and put a, a bigger hole in there so that's what I'm going to use for the springs um, let's see I guess that's about as far as I've gotten so far uh, besides a lathe I also uh, bought a, um, a milling machine the other day because there's some other parts that I want to be able to make that are not just round so that's what I've been doing so far and uh, I ordered some POR 15 again and uh, I had done a video I don't know if you guys had seen it on uh, POR 15 about how hard it is to keep it clean and get the lid off I also saw that they sell little pint cans so I bought like four or five pint cans you know, I think it's four, four pint cans so that when I start painting this stuff you know I'll clean this off and paint it I don't have so much trouble trying to get the paint out, uh, out of the can because that was really a pain I, I think I wasted at least a pint of it and it's 50 bucks a quart so you know you don't want to be wasting that stuff so anyway that's where I stand so far and uh, just taking time it was kind of tough working on these control arms today because I didn't know how to uh, I didn't have the tool to actually get them out I knew how to get them out but I didn't have the tool to get them out uh, now with having the lathe I could have made a tool easy but I didn't have the stock you know the stock metal that I needed to make the tool I needed uh, something bigger than that iron pipe 
but it just so happened that I iron pipe works so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some aluminum I'll get some aluminum uh, tubing or even just plain aluminum block and I'll make on the lathe a tool to be able to take these bushings out in case I have to do it later on sometime but it does make life a lot easier and having the lathe makes things easier because I can make tools that I never had before and I don't have to buy um, just the uh, tool alone to take the, the um, bushings out of the control arms I know people said you can probably rent one but I didn't buy the parts locally so I don't want to go renting to or getting tools for free out at advance auto or whatever I just don't like doing that but I would buy them <coughs> and um, the cheapest bushing removal tool that I saw was 150 bucks so you can see that rather than use that I used about a dollar fifty cents worth of iron pipe and probably seventy cents for a uh, grade 8 bolt in the pitman arm I had and I actually had that round uh, wheel that you see there and I had that from something else that I had cut out with a hole saw so alright guys we'll have a good one it's time for my bedtime almost just wanted to clean up my garage a little bit I had a pretty good mess I don't like working in a mess and not only that I tend to trip over stuff as I get older it's hard to pick my feet up <laughs> You young guys are going to have that to look forward to. Alright, so anyway, that's where I stand so far. Hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, the reason I can't make the videos and actually show you how I'm doing stuff is because this stupid camera I have will go dead after like 10 or 15 minutes. Right now it's at 12 minutes and the light's already flashing telling me the battery's going. So, alright guys, have a good night. Talk to you later. Bye.